This is a city built for innovators, for can-doers, chasing impossibilities till they yield possibilities. A city built for dream chasers, chasing dreams before they disappear. But not all dreams come true. Some are defeated by cold realities. Some just fade. Some dreams will stand apart from the rest. Others will merge with the ordinary. And in this city of dream chasers, and at the dawn of the digital age, billions of ideas and dreams are battling it out. My quest is to find the exceptional one, that one in a billion. The one who conquers all the challenges with all but one idea. A quest for the outliers. This is a celebration of the human spirit. The spirit to explore, to innovate, to survive, to compete, to do better, to be better, to be that one in a billion, to be a unicorn. Earlier people used to say, I'm starting a new business now, everything's a startup. Can I give this away? There are two kinds of people in this world, those who've already started a startup and those who eventually will. India is becoming the startup capital of the entire world. And this is our quest to find the next unicorn, the next company that's valued at a billion dollars. But our quest is a little bit more. A company valued at a billion dollars with brand new ideas worth more than a billion dollars. Our adventure, our quest begins. This is Unicorn, chasing the startup dream. A simple idea, the core behind most startups. While some make it on the simplest of ideas, some can't even get past the initiation stage even with their best laid plans. And such is the world of startups. I'm Pallavi Batra and on today's episode of Unicorn, I'm going to put two such innovative startups through a trial of fire. Our first startup on the show is a very nascent one called Teslon that has invented a quirky product called Fidu. And they were showcasing at the NASCOM 10,000 startup conclave in Bangalore. For a young startup like Teslon that is still trying to find its feet, networking is crucial. After all, an event like that may just get you that headline-making investment from the venture capitalists with deep pockets. But Tesla also needed to stand out in the competition. So we got some behind-the-scenes action of how such startups strike the right chord with the right people at these events. The NASCOM product conclave proved to be the confluence of exciting startups and venture capitalists. Along with being a great networking platform, it also gave the founders a sense of where they stand vis-a-vis -vis tough competition. But I was on a mission to find something unique. And I did, Fidu by Teslon, which hooked me in for its simple idea backed by a superior technology, which may just be the mantra for the startup to pass the test. Meet Prashant Prabhu and Harsha Murur, the two powerhouse brains behind Teslon. A startup that has used Internet of Things technology to invent Fidu, an IoT enabled pet feeding device for fish. The duo of engineers work out of a small space in Bengaluru, but the scope and scale of their idea is immense. It is undeniable that the Internet of Things is a powerful, almost fantasy-driven technology. Startups like Teslon are aiming to create a fully functional network society embedded with electronics, software sensors and network connectivity, enabling machines to talk to each other without any human intervention. That's exactly what these engineers aim to do. 
use the Internet of Things to reduce human intervention in one of the most common use cases, the ability to feed our pets, especially fish with a mere tap on our smartphones. But I want to know if India's fish market is big enough to guarantee success for Fidu. So I can see that a lot of engineering and science has gone into your startup, which is great. So tell me about your product, Fidu. Fidu is a, a very friendly Internet of Things enabled uh, pet feeding system. It stemmed from a very common problem that both Harsha and I faced uh, you know, at home, where uh, uh, we travel quite a lot. And, uh, we're always concerned about uh, what's the fish doing, <laughs> right? Whether it is a live feed or uh, whether you're actually uh, feeding the fish or nitrogen levels or CO levels or anything, right? It, it was a very, very compelling reason for us to you know, build from the ground up okay. uh, what we uh, now call the uh, Fidu. So you're going live on Indiegogo very soon. What are your expectations from this campaign and why crowdfunding? Fidu is a very uh, emotional uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, bonding uh, product. Right. The crowdfunding route was a perfect fit for that because uh, it allows us to sort of uh, uh, understand what is the pulse of the market. Now Tesla and Fidu are both, you know, it's a bootstrap company. Why did you choose to go down that road? When you're starting off with an idea, and uh, an emotional one at that, we don't know the market. That is why I think uh, it, it's critical that you actually have to know who your uh, uh, crowd, uh, who your target uh, audience is. Right? And I, I'd like to take a little bit of uh, uh, baby steps, and I'm sure <laughs> Harsha will agree that uh, you know, before uh, jumping right in, Test the borders. And so how important do you think events like the NASCOM product conclave are for startups? No, it's, it's absolutely uh, the most uh, critical thing in the startup ecosystem at this point, I would think. And uh, NASCOM, the Intel Hackathon, uh, the Google Core Day, all of these events uh, essentially, uh, at least to me, when I, when I look at the young people out there who are building their uh, products okay. and with the, the Maker Faire and everything, it gives me a feeling that India is finally, uh, you know, maturing into a product, uh, uh, you know, startup uh, uh, mode, uh, whereas it was dormant for so long. Now I love the emotional attachment that you have with your fish, and I love the emotional connect of Fidu. So can we go feed the pets? Sure, let's do Great. it. Great. As Harsha set up the aquarium to give me a demo of Fidu, I couldn't help but wish that the technology could be used for other pets. And as for how the device works, it's pretty easy to use. A small cube-like container app is installed inside the aquarium. It is connected to the cloud, which contains all the relevant information, like how much food is left, feed history, and it all gets synced to your phone in real time through the Feedu app. In the app, by clicking on the Feed Now button, fish food gets dropped into the aquarium, making your fish happy. With Feedu technology, one can control other aspects of the aquarium as well like the lights, the aerator, and the heater inside, all remotely. Pet owners can not just feed their fish from anywhere in the world, but they can also monitor the fish's habitat through a webcam. Now, what I think our viewers would like to know is how you're pricing the feedu. I think that's going to be a big factor for everyone. Yeah, we are, we are planning on pricing it uh, on the sub-5,900 uh, range. Okay. It seems to me that the founders need to expand their horizons to other pets to capture a bigger market. For a bootstrap company that is soon going live on Indiegogo, I have to admit that the founders are a nervous yet inspired bunch who have strong beliefs in hardware startups being the real market disruptors. But have they cracked the pricing code? Is Firu going to be able to differentiate itself from other hardware startups that crash and burn? We'll only know once we ask the mentors. Meet Abhinav Mathur, the former Chief of Strategy and Technology at Spice Global, who has recently started Lock Times, an app that provides trending news, interest-driven stories and articles. He's known to be outspoken and doesn't mince his words. He has a keen eye when it comes to spotting startups and is known to give many founders a reality check. Our second mentor is Raja Tandon, the Vice President of NASCOM 10K Startups. Rajat is actively involved in scaling up the startup ecosystem in India and advises the many startups under NASCOM's 10K program. I think this is a very good implementation of uh, an IoT where and in terms of a customer requirement and looking at somebody who you really love. 
So they've matched the three things beautifully. Uh, well, they need to scale up. That's what my advice is. Sidhu is an interesting play because they have been able to construct a platform around IoT. Right now, they have used IoT to look at a very, very small use case. If I were to look at from a size standpoint, it will require a very passionate person to actually be able to invest that kind of money into such a piece of equipment. As far as the pricing goes, I think, you know, they have to kind of have a, a model which is, you know, entry level should be low. And I think depending upon what kind of services you are trying to derive, derive from the IoT product and the durables, you know, you can build up your scale up your model on that. Well, you heard it. Fidu does have a long way to go before it establishes itself. But while nascent startups struggle to make a mark, there are the big ones, the unicorns, which are beating large MNCs and sponsoring big ticket events. So let's hear from Google Sunil Rao, what's driving the money from the founders' pockets into TV programming. Startups have got uh, all the money to spend to acquire customers, and that's why they are spending so much on the big ticket items. And they are able to raise so much amount of funding or equity only with the promise back to the sta their uh, stakeholders that they'll be adding so many additional customers and there'll be additional revenues month on month. So they are in that game and they have to achieve their goals.